this is the question as it appeared in your pre-workshop or something to this effect. So what I was just going to do was show you how I would solve this problem. How I'd write out um, the solution path, how to think about variables and so forth. So we're going to do that. That might take 20 minutes and then we'll open up to the workshop time uh, yourself. If you're not interested in watching this one through, then you're welcome to open up the workshop week two dash two uh, questions and, and start to do that uh, on your own. I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to your friends while I'm doing this. So, the first thing that I do when I'm solving a problem is I write down the things that I know. Because I often find that there's clues in what's known. Um, so I take them out of the, the paragraph and kind of put them out. And so it looks like we've got two states. And at one state, we've got a pressure and a temperature and a volume. So I can say things that I know. Pressure 1 equals 200 kPa. And I'm converting back to kPa straight away. So if it's given to me in megapascals or bar or psi or whatever, I want to work in, in kPa. So I'll convert that to kPa. Temperature 1 is given as 300 K. If the temperature is not given in Kelvin, and it's an ideal gas problem, I'll convert it back to Kelvin at this point as well. As we'll see with steam next week, um, we work in degrees C for that. But uh, for ideal gases, we work in Kelvin. So, and we're given the volume. Volume 1 equals 39 meters cubed. Then it undergoes a process to a final state. I'm going to call that state two, where the pressure is. Once again, it's given in bar, so I can convert that to kPa. So pressure two is 140 kPa. And we're given a volume. We're not given a temperature. Sure, no worries. Uh, during a process, a paddle wheel transfers energy to the air by work. So the air is this, is so labelled on the inside. So, and here's a paddle wheel. So something's turning this, maybe a motor, maybe a hand crank. 140 kilojoules. Feels like a motor would be better. Um, transfers to the air by work, 140 kilojoules. So work, oops, it has you. Work from the paddle wheel is 140 kilojoules. Now, is that a positive or negative 140 kilojoules? If you think it's a positive 140 kilojoules, you can point to this side of the room. If you think it's a negative 140 kilojoules, you can point to this side of the room. Everyone should be pointing. Cool, good. The paddle wheel transfers energy to the air by work, 140. Where were people pointing? Cool, good, good, good. It's just good that you know that you're committing, right? So according to our convention, we will say that work that our system does on the surroundings, right, is positive and work, so, we could call that work out. And work that the surroundings does on our system, which we'll call work in, is negative. So this is work that the surroundings are doing on our system, so it's negative work. Did anyone who got that either right or wrong want to talk about that, ask a question about it, get clarity? Go. Sorry? Yes, you can. So in this course, we'll use, in this course, we will say delta U equals Q minus W, okay? And we'll say that this is how work happens, okay? There is a different way of saying, well, delta U equals Q plus W. <coughs> and then these signs get turned around, okay? So for the purpose of teaching the course, we have to pick a system and be consistent with it, but 
you're welcome in your own notes to use a system that you're more familiar with, if that's the case. It'll come down to the final answer. Uh, yeah, it'll come down to the final answer. And so if, for example, and even if the final answer asked you for, I mean, not in these, because these are just numerical things, right? But in a written exam, if it said what was the work and that was the, what you required, if you had the incorrect sign on your work, or incorrect in, in my terms because of the conventions I use, but you're, you clearly wrote, you know, um, 140 kilojoules into the system, then even though the sense is wrong because it doesn't have minus in front of it, I would mark that correct because you've indicated sense. You know, like if you were asked for a force and you said 100 kilonewtons to the left. Oh, we should have said minus 100 kilonewtons. Well, you've said to the left, so that kind of... Um, is that clear? Clear as mud? Good. So I'm happy with whatever convention you use. Um, if you use a different convention, be clear with your wording um, what the sense of the work is, whether it's going in or out. Cool. While the air transfers energy by work to the piston in the amount of 200 kilo, 80 kilojoules. So the piston is being pushed. If I can pick a color, it's going to show off. Show up to the right. So the piston's being pushed to the right by the air. So we can call that work of piston. That was 280 kilojoules. Positive or negative? Positive. We're happy that this is the system doing work on the surroundings. It's pushing the volumes increasing. Indeed, you can see the volumes increasing. That's an indication that the system is doing work on the surroundings. So is that all that our preamble is giving us? While the air transfers energy by work to the piston, oh, my apologies. While the air, yep, yeah, good. That's what we've just done. It's one already. Good. That's all we know. Use ideal gas behavior. What's the final air temperature? We're using air, so that tells us what our CP, CV, K, R, and R values are going to be, should we need them. So those are the things we know. And I'm going to write air and double underline it because it's worth knowing what your working fluid is. This would be very different if our working fluid was a refrigerant. It'd be very different. Well, it'd be slightly different if it was a helium or a hydrogen. The numbers would be different. So it's worth knowing um, what we've got. Cool. Uh, now we write out what we want to find. So we want to find T2 and Q12. So yeah, find. T2 and Q12. And I always write that when I'm solving problems so I know when I've got my solution. So now I am. Cool. T2 is notably absent here, but there's something we can use to find it. Right? And for me, I would use the combined gas law. So for a, for a substance in a closed system, none of the gas is leaving, none, no, none of the gas is entering, we know that P... V equals MRT. If mass doesn't change and the substance doesn't change, R doesn't change, then we can say PV on T equals MR. Because MR is a constant, that's true at state 1 and it's true at state 2. Then we can rearrange that and say T2 goes up on the left-hand side equals... P2, V2 on P1, V1 times T1. People happy with that as a use of the combined gas law? So this is our equation for T2. We know P2, we know uh, V2, we know P1, we know V1, we know T1. We can calculate T2. Uh, which is... So now, T2 equals, what were they, P2? 140 times 44 divided by 200 times 39 times 300. This is non-dimensional because it's a ratio of like terms. And this has units of Kelvin, so we're going to get units of Kelvin out of that, which is cool. Uh, does someone want to swing me the answer? 
That's fine. Good. While you're working on that. I'll get a numerical answer from someone with calculator as it comes. Now, to find Q1 to 2, we know that for a closed system, delta U equals Q minus W. We've been working on this all week. We are given no heat exchange. So Q is equal to zero. Just making sure that's the case. Good. So Q is going to go to zero. Our work is actually a summation of two works in this case. That's a terrible sigma. Right. Equals minus 140 plus 280. So 140 kilojoules. And our delta U for an ideal gas is MCV delta T. Right. What's the mass of our system? We're not told, but we can use PV equals MRT, M equals P1V1 on RT1 equals, what was it, 200... 39 on 0 0.287 times 300. That'll give us our mass. Our CV for air is 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And our delta T is our T2 value. Oh, Sorry, what is the heat transfer? Good, good. I'm like, this isn't going to work out. We've got no unknown. Q doesn't equal zero. Q is the unknown. Excellent. So we need Q minus 140 kilojoules. Q equals 140 kilojoules plus... MCV, I'm going to say T2 minus T1. Cool. Does anyone want to talk about that more? Do you want me to put the numbers in? Putting the numbers in to me just means alt tabbing across to Chrome and calculator stuff, right? But that's the logic. So... Places that you could get trapped on this question is the sense of the work, knowing whether it's into or out of the system, positive or negative work. And the two tricks are the combined gas law and the first law for closed systems. Yeah. Yes. Yes, no worries. So CV and R, where do they come from and, and can they be provided? Yes. So for air, those values would be the values that will come up. If you just say CV for air, <coughs> that one. Um, but in this week's reading, there's, um, uh, yeah, I'll put out a complete center on the bowls tables. So the SI tables from the back of this book are being made available this week as party readings. And that has air properties. Yeah. In, in exams gone by, I've had a um, supplementary book. So you've got the exam book and then a supplementary book of tables. And that will be the case as well. Yeah. But the, these, ones are pretty, um, these ones are pretty well known. They do vary with temperature. Um, the temperatures we're talking about, well, this temperature is 300 Kelvin, so this is 300 Kelvin. They're, they're pretty well known. <laughs>